Hello and welcome to my channel. Well, the title or the thumbnail probably gave it away, but in this box is a knife. And the type of knife it is, is a clasp knife. Now, these are marble clasp knives and they had a series of them. Uh, they're pretty nice. It's usually like a big buoy kind of a blade. Uh, these, you know, have etchings on them and stuff like that. So if you're going to use them, you might, eh, you, you might not want to use them because of that. Uh, a lot of companies made clasp knives. And they, this design of knife has been around for a while. This is a case buffalo. And that's considered a clasp knife. Non-locking. This one doesn't have a half stop on it. Uh, these don't have a half stop. It's lazy. You know, it just rolls right through there. Not a real solid lockup on uh, those particular ones. They came in a nice box. And uh, interesting stories on each one, you know, when I found them. Uh, but... That's not what, what's in there. I just had this up there for looks. And then this is when I was working at uh, Ratco. We had to do inventory. And since there were a lot of Hispanic workers there too, they had, they had these buttons made up. says, every part counts. And then they had to make a Spanish version of it. I don't know what Dracula Muppet has got to do with We're Night Ship, but I mean, I, I don't know what. I don't know what it had to do with that. Anyways, this is in the tater skin version. And I'd just like to say that uh, when I first started collecting Brett Barter knives, this is called a Deer Slayer. It's got a nice half stop on it. One nail nick. And if you look at this, it's the old school Rough Rider. With an I, the script one. But it's got a new number on it, RR2329. That's probably because of the handles, but this design, they had they had deer slayers in different, you know, handle patterns. We'll get to measuring all this uh, pretty soon, but I was what I was going to talk about was it has the old RT on it. So you're supposed to be an R, but doesn't that look like RT to you? You know? It's an R with a unicorn and then a T. Anyway, these might be collectible. Because, see, you know, like, this one had some kind of, like, floral stamping on it, you know. So, it's no big deal on this. But, man, uh, it's just very well done. This is a smooth micarta. It's not real rough. Uh, a nice plain blade, no billboarding. Over here, you just have to really look for it. But it says 440 razor sharp. And these are laser etched in here. So it's not like the rubber stamp. A nice lockup. Uh, a nice transition. There's a little gap right here. But this is on the mainspring. It's not on the, you know, the liners. But it's very well fitted. Just a, a great, a great design knife. You know, you got a big hand filling knife now of course you know you're gonna have to know your own laws because you got a nice four inch blade here <clears throat> what i was gonna say is when i first started collecting rough riders uh, i was trying to collect one of every pattern that they had and this was one of the earlier ones but they you know way rough rider was and smkw was doing i didn't have a lot of sources for rough riders it was mainly I didn't know about them, you know, so it was mainly just uh, Smokey. And if Smokey didn't have it, then, you know, it's a uh, back order, notify me or something like that. And you'd never get notified. They never come in. And I, I, I started realizing that. Well, eventually some of them come on outside. You just never know. But you couldn't get this pattern. You couldn't get it. The only way you could get it was on eBay. And they were going for ridiculous price. 
50 60 75 dollars you know and you know if it was on a bid people would go crazy you know to get them and stuff now this is more available it's available in smoky it's available in chicago knife works and uh, ebay is still selling for like 35 or something dollars i'll put that up there uh but smoky or smkw and uh, Chicago Knife Works, the two that I know of that have it in stock. And this is also going to be, see, it's got the nice little shield there. This is kind of, you know, if you're, if you're picky, maybe it's optical, but doesn't it look kind of off-center? I don't know, it depends on, depends on how you're holding it. But it looks kind of canted this way, uh, if you're going to be picky. But, um, yeah, this is going to be the giveaway knife for this month and i need to pick up another one of these because i just like these big knives you know i mean look at that compared to you've got a big blade here i think this is like 25 dollars this one's going for about 18 or so which is a very good price man i mean really it's got a solid lock up as long as you put your finger like right here and you hold it. I mean, this is that's a strong lock up there, and you got plenty of room, plenty of handle. It looks a lot like, you know, a, a Navaja, but this one actually has a a lock on it. But I mean, you can see the same kind of like horn shape. We got a disengaged lock here. Um, but yeah, even the case, even the case has. Uh, you know, some kind of billboard in it. It's good. It's etched in there real well. You know, it identifies who made it, but Case has also got that there. Made in USA. Handmade. Handmaiden. All right, so, uh, yeah, I just like the looks of this. Nice and clean, smooth, thin, you know, for a big knife. It's it, it, No big thickness in there. This is actually a little bit thicker. Case's leaf's got some swell, you see, going on there. You can see this one doesn't. But basically the same size as the Case Buffalo thing. And these are expensive, you know, at least at least $100 for a used one. These are brand new. Or this one's brand new. Now, I'm going to use it. But not abuse it, like I said in the thing. And uh, we got to have a magic word. So I've already thought of it. And the way it works is, you know, let's go over the rules real quickly. You don't have to be subscribed, although I would appreciate it. Uh, you don't have to give this video a thumbs up. But it'd be nice, you know, if you would. Um, uh, you don't have to be a member, although this is, this is made possible by my members channel. Uh, it's once a month. You can join for as little as 99 cents or as high as like four something, I think. Uh, but you don't have to, but they make it possible, uh, because I have around, you know, like 18 members, 15 to 18, you know, it runs around there somewhere. And, uh, yeah, you don't get all these, you don't get, you don't get this knife, you don't get all those knives, just this one. And they make it possible, my loyal members make it possible, because when I first started, I was, I had just had a membership of two dollars, and I figured YouTube would take 50% of that or so, so I get about a dollar a member, and just to make it easy to figure out the number of members I had, that's the amount that I would spend on the monthly giveaway. And since I have 18, this was around 18. It's more than that if you look in other places, and it's definitely worth more. I think they're definitely worth more than $18. But it can be yours free if you put the magic word in the description. Now, this is only open to people in the United States uh, 18 years or older, you know, know your life knife laws you know if you if you can't carry a 
anything over three inch blade this is beyond three inches and so you can't you can't get the knife and then say well williams knife life said it's okay to carry i said it was okay to carry in texas it depends on where you're at you know and even in texas there are limitations for some knives but like i said this is non-locking and it's made out of taters it's tater skin brown burlap micarta this is a, the number rr2329 and the magic word will be shadow uh mainly because shadow wants he you know he noticed that buddy has got uh an icon up there and i think when i reach a certain number of uh an avatar or whatever a sticker an emoji that's what it is an emoji when i reach a certain number of them i'm allowed to have one more and i was trying to think of who to add in there and you know i've got dinosaurs i'm gonna go over all the different stuff that uh, it goes away and give give away in uh, but this was all i could find about clasp knife you know like I said, they've been around for a while. Uh, this is a K-Bar Grizzly. I marked everything with pink that was pertinent here. Uh, they consider farmer's clasp knife as a sod buster. So, you know, here's a case sod buster. But as you can see, it's got a fairly thick blade. It works the same way, but it's much thinner, much smaller. than that um let's see what else you have this is an old book you know but it, eh, use what you got see foreign exotic historical folding knives england clasp knives three to twelve inches long clothes long iron bolsters usually integral with the liners late 17th to early 19th century a popular style in the american colonies often found in archaeological sites value 250 dollars up that's for one of those yeah. oh look at that that's cool that is cool i've never i've never noticed that one before a very large ornate folder possibly made as weapons or tools but probably made for collectors yeah maybe shown in from france that's above shown right western europe i've seen examples marked arnold Nemur, belgium nine inches long clothes switchblade wow with external thumb release trigger that hooks over the back of the blade stag or every handle steel mounts trigger guard 19th century example shown has etched blade and bolsters oh i thought that was rust but edge courtesy of smithsonian institute advised by the advice collection illegal to own or sell in most states Ooh, you can't even own it <laughs> so yeah there you go that's uh that's all pretty much he had on there he didn't have a he didn't he said he uh, named american patterns and not once did they mention one about class it's really hard to find stuff in there so there you go limit you know one entry no no bots no spamming uh, if you want to be in it just you don't have to put it all over the place you can just put it in the sentence or just one word you know um and then uh, I'll do a drawing in a week. And we'll give that away, this knife away, plus, you know, the uh, the Nesmok is going also. This was courtesy of Tobias. Knife chats with Tobias. I sharpened this sucker up. It's sharp AF. This one I haven't cut anything with. Like I said, I don't know. We're going we're gonna to get into that. I'll do a little... Before the week is up, I'll do a little evaluation of it, you know, on cutting and carrying, because I'm not going to, I don't want to scuff it up, and I don't want to mess it up, because it's, it's a giveaway knife. I, you'll get the box, you'll, you'll get the little cover, and, uh, oh, this also came with my S.E. Azula 
see, you can get these handles like that. This is the Azula, the Azula Tula, and this is Azula, just Azula. But this is the Ken Kenduru. All it looks is like the handle is a little bit different, and the blade is maybe a little more pointy. Um, but that might make more of a dedicated neck knife. Anyways, it came with that, and then it says here, you know. This is how you're going to get it if you got it as a kit. You'll get this stuff. And this is how to do your paracord if you didn't have a handle. And then uh, you can put a little snap hook on there. You can make your own belt loop like this. If you get a little whistle. Mine didn't come with a little whistle. You can put that in there. And then this is pretty cool. Using split rings. Two different size split rings. As a trap. You see how they've done that? It's pretty cool. When this gets pulled away, this is allowed to... It's under tension. It's allowed to... Bing! And then whatever that was binging on is going to bing something's head. And how to use a ferro rod. And this is how to remove the knife. Yeah, so... I'm really happy with that one. I've been carrying it on my belt. It's it's ready for action. I find uh, I like big blades, um, but I find that carrying this in my pocket, even though it's a bigger blade, takes more you know more laziness. It takes more sequences. Even reaching down in my pocket and pulling this guy out and doing this. How many steps that I have to do? How many steps that I have to do for that? Uh, you just grab and pull. You don't have to change your position, move your hand, figure out which way you want to manipulate. Is it button or is? With this, it's going to take two hands. You know. Um, but, anyways. I just, uh, you know, like I said, I just, I've just been enjoying fixed blades lately. So there you go. I've rambled on entirely too much. Um, good luck to everyone who enters in this, like I said. We usually get maybe 20 to at most like 30 people enter these things. So usually have a pretty good chance. If you've entered in one before, you can enter and win again. There's no rule against that. Um, yeah, just drop a comment in there with the magic word. You all know what it is. And then uh, we'll, we'll have a winner. We'll pick a winner. So, yeah. And here... Here's all the goodies in there so far. I, I keep throwing more stuff in. Oh, and you got a, a Dalek. Let me get this. Put this in its proper container. They had, when I was at Dollar Tree the last time, they had... Um, where, where is it? They had Dollar 25 because... Folding knife. Now, I got a box cutter in there, too. I mean, so with, with the combination of all these knives and stuff in here and a, a dedicated box cutter, you are guaranteed to have something sharp if you win. That's, that's all I'm saying. But, yeah, this is cool. It, kind of, it just came in that little plastic, you know, thing. It's a magnetic box. It doesn't say anything about taters. Always high-quality handmade pocket knives. I didn't mean it. Oh, here. Oh, and if you're, uh, it's, it says China, and then if you're in California, you could get cancer, you know, from this, so. Hey, don't blame me. You've been warned. Warned by the labels. There you go. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.